everybody. Please give a warm, warm welcome to your friend and mine, Mr. Luke Gasky. Hey, oh, oh, hey, hey, oh, oh, it's so good to be back. Hey. Hey guys, hey guys, a little bit about me, a little bit about me. My name's Luke Gasky. A little bit about me, a little bit about me. Uh, when I was a child, my mother told me that uh, they don't have recess time uh, in high school, and I cried myself to sleep. Get away, get away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm getting better all the time. I'm getting better all the time. <laughs> all right, guys. Guys, um, suffice to say, uh, trauma and me were basically like a couple at this point. Um, after after what my mother did uh, to me that faithful morning all those years ago, um, we just like we're, we're like two pieces of the pod, me and trauma. Um, and I I I, I have one uh, one thing to blame. Uh, not above the rest, but it has always been a, um, um, a um, uh, right behind me at all times. That has been uh, work. Having to do any amount of work has always caused me great trauma, and I would prefer not to do it. Alas, <laughs> um, I have had to work to survive. Um, specifically in retail, I've had uh, several retail jobs, um, and I will give you a few samples today in case you are not familiar with what the uh, typical retail experience is. All right, so my first job, my first job was at this lovely little place, little, little mom and pop shop, I like to call a uh, Walmart. You know that? <laughs> um, a little place called Wally World, a little place that I like to call the happiest place on the damn planet, okay? Um, my first week at Walmart, uh, this lady came up, I was a cashier, I was scanning her items, she said, uh, Luke, sunny boy, uh, I've got this bottle of detergent and I've got this coupon with it that gives me 1% off. It is vital that you scan this, uh, this coupon so I can get this 1% discount. And I said, ma'am, I would love nothing more. Okay. Uh, so I scan the detergent. I scan the coupon. And the computer tells me, uh, no. It tells me, no, the coupon is expired. And I'm like, oh, well, that's, that's a funny little thing. That's a funny little situation now. Uh, and so I explained to this woman, I say, ma'am, the coupon is expired, wouldn't you know? Uh, and she says, uh, first of all, no, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> second of all, check again. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and so I check the coupon. And the craziest thing is um, it is expired, but it expired that day. All right. It said May 28th. And wouldn't you know, it was May 28th, the day that this was conspiring. Um, and so this is just the funniest thing in the damn world, right? I'm about to tell this woman, what a coincidence. She's going to go crazy. She's going to go on a riot when I tell her that it is expired today. She's going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I tell her, I say, ma'am, you're never going to believe You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe this, ma'am. The damn coupons expired to debt. She says, what's it say? I said, it said May 28th. Can you believe that? And she says, today's May 28th. And I was like, that's what I was saying. <laughs> and she's like, if it expires May 28th and today is May 28th, that means I have the rest of the day to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, man. <laughs> Well, isn't that just funny? Isn't that just the funniest damn thing you'd ever heard in your damn life? Right? Because it seems to me that we have different definitions on what the word expiration means. <laughs> it seems to me that you're speaking a goddamn different language than me. <laughs> it seems, and I don't know how we're gonna just, I don't know how we're gonna move forward if you're not speaking my language, all right? But moving forward, I, I quit Walmart eventually. I moved on to this great place, another mom and pop shop. I don't know if you've heard of it called Goodwill. All right. <laughs> and after my experience with Walmart, uh, things got a lot less irritating and a lot more confusing and fear inducing. Um, so this was just a regular week at Goodwill. 
uh, this dude comes in and he's buying some random junk, right? That's all we sell is random junk. And I'm just scanning it. I'm scanning it. And a, a little, a little bit in, he says, by the way, I'm using cash. I'm going to be paying with cash. And I'm like, dude, dude, that is par for the course, my friend. <laughs> that it, it was, it was a 50, 50 shot of you using cash or cards. So right now my, my boat is smooth sailing. All right. And so I'm scanning, I'm scanning his items still and a minute passes. All right, he says, oh, by the way, it's going to be wet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I, and so I say, um, I say, the money? <laughs> he says, yes, the money is going to be wet. <laughs> like, ah. Okay. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. That's, I don't judge. I'm not one to judge. It was raining earlier that day. Maybe the, the poor guy got a little dripped on. Okay. So I, I continue scanning his items and another minute passes and he says, uh, yeah, I took a shower and forgot to take my wallet out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm just trying to scan your items, dude. Oh. <laughs> is so yeah apparently he was wearing his clothes when he took a shower and the weirdest part was he left his wallet in um and so i finally finished scanning his items and sure enough you know i i'm praying to god that this is going to turn out well somehow but no he hands me his cash and it is just drenched it is <laughs> it is soaking wet he took that shower, realized, oh, I left my wallet in my pocket, and then immediately decided to go to Walmart because it was that wet. <laughs> if it had been any more wet, it could not be classified as money. All right. <laughs> if it was any more wet, it would be just tearing apart at the seams. Um, and I kissed him goodbye and he left. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I proceeded to put the money at the bottom of the drawer so no other customers would have to deal with it. Um, but that is just my retail experience when it comes to trauma. No, no, trauma digs a little deeper for me. It digs a little deeper, it digs into my blood. My own bloodline is responsible for the amount of trauma. Um, and it goes as far back as to when I was just a wee little lad of seven years old uh, when I was a child, I wanted one thing and one thing only, one thing above all else, and that was a Build-A-Bear from Build-A-Bear Workshop. Okay, I wanted a Build-A-Bear because it was the only toy that I knew of at the time that was uniquely my own. I could create it in my vision. All right. And I would come to my mother time after time requesting for that for which I wanted more than anything. And each time she would reject me and she would reject me on the same pretense. And that pretense was if I went to elementary school and the students for which I called my acquaintances witnessed me in possession of a Build-A-Bear and these are my mom's words, my mother, God rest her soul, they would refer to me as a homosexual. And this was heartbreaking <laughs> for two reasons. Reason number one, I don't get a build of it. Reason number two, this was my first interaction with this concept of homosexuality, all right? And the way that she's presenting it is homosexuality is something to be afraid of. It is something that you would want to reject being or just reject period, right? And this is, this is um, crushing for someone of my mind, right? And, and because I'm so young at the time, I'm seven years old, God rest my soul, um, I just go with it. I just believe it. And, um, it, and then it wouldn't be until I matured that I realized how ignorant my goddamn mother was, all right? Because when I was a child, it was presented as this thing like, oh, I, I can't p possibly be perceived as a homosexual. That would do unconceivable damage to my reputation as a seven-year-old, right? But I did mature and I did learn. 
And I confronted my mother. I said, mother, you ignorant bitch. You are wrong. <laughs> Homosexuality is not something to be afraid of. And it's also something that is not <laughs> by a bear. <laughs> and so a, a little piece of my soul was then was then brought back to itself in a way. But there was still a hole, my friends. There was still a hole. And that hole was in the shape of, wouldn't you guess, a builder bear <laughs> So very recently, about a year ago, I went to build a bear workshop and I ran through those doors. I busted them down. And I said, excuse me, ma'am. I need your gayest build a bear <laughs> <laughs> And I made that bear a flaming homosexual. I gave it rain boots. I gave it striped rainbow leggings and I got it a shirt with a rainbow on it that says, I'm a flaming homosexual. And I bought it. It cost like a hundred bucks because I got all the accessories. And you think I'd be done there. You think I'd be done there, but I'm not done quite yet. All right, because I marched my ass to that elementary school. <laughs> Burst down those doors. I kicked them down. All right, and I grabbed my builder bear and I ran into the hallways and I screamed. I screamed, children, get out of here. And they started coming and they started flooding in wave by wave into the hallway. And they said, who is this man? Who is this man? And I said, witness me. Witness me. And they started pointing. They started pointing at me. They said, who is this? Who is this homosexual? <laughs> and I said, no, 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 you ignorant bitches. <laughs> it's not I who is the homosexual. No, Neri. In fact, it is the bear who be the homosexual. <laughs> or it is not the bear which buildeth me, but I who build the bear. <laughs> <laughs>